Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's start off this one seriously, guys, with a trivia contest. Now, this is going to be some pretty hard stuff, and there's no hope of you passing this if you're not a true One Piece fan. But if you do manage to get a perfect score, let me know in the comments below, and I will personally send you an apple pie, damn it. All right, first question. Do you know who this is? Do you know who this man is? This is Fujitora, Navy Admiral. How about this guy? Do you know who this is? This is Kizaru. Hi, Navy Admiral! How about this magnificent man? Well, that's a Kainu, Navy Fleet Admiral! And this, th well, that's a penguin. A penguin named Camel. That works for Aokiji, former Navy Admiral! Yeah! So today's video is going to be all about carrots. Oh my god, isn't she just so kawaii, you know? It doesn't matter how many videos I make about her, they're just not enough, you know? I love her ears, they're just so... I wonder if she could take her ears and, like, nibble on them? That'd be so adorable. Okay, so, uh, this is a video I've had on the back burner for a while. Normally, how I come up with video ideas is, you know, an idea will pop into my head. One of the first things I'll do is I'll make a thumbnail of said video and make a folder for it, and then just kind of throw it off into another folder, and like, oh, that's my, my current projects. I can just reach into there if I'm ever having a problem coming up with a video on that day, or if there's nothing else going on. I could just reach into that folder, pull out an idea, and just go with that. Yeah, this video has been sitting in that folder for a year year and a half. You know, I thought, oh, I should do a video about the Straw Hats facing off against the Admirals. You know, because obviously that's going to happen at some point in the series, like the final battles between uh, the, the three Admirals and the Straw Hats. Yeah, yeah, we could talk about that. So it's been a while since I came up with the concept. I need to just get this out of there. I'm tired of seeing it all the time I open that folder up. Okay, so um, obviously we all know who's going to face off against the Admirals, right? It's going to be Nami and Usopp. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious because Usopp Usopp uses uh, fire-based attacks, you know, like the Firebird star and everything. He's obviously going to go up against a Kainu. Uh, and since Nami can use her Mirage tempos and, you know, Fata Morganas, you know, what does that do? Well, it manipulates light, in a sense, to, you know, create illusions. So I think it's fair to say she's going to go up against Kizaru. Now, each of these individual fights are probably only going to last about a chapter because those two characters are just so OP. I'm, of course, referring to Nami and Usopp here, not, not the other two. Um, but who's going to fight against uh, Fujitora? And more importantly, who's going to fight against um, Ryo Kyogu, who we don't know about anything yet. Uh, he's just the shadowy, mysterious character. Now, I think it's I think you could probably assume that Fujitora is going to go up against Chopper. But when it comes to Ryo Kyogu, you know, I'm thinking, and this is going to be a controversial decision, I'm thinking Gaimon. He's got a green afro, Ryo Kyogu's green bull, I think it works. Okay, now listen, <laughs> that was bullshit aside. Would you not like to read a fanfiction based around those fights? I mean, I kind of would, you know? And you, you could make it a little bit... I mean, Usopp wouldn't immediately die, right? I mean, it's not like Akainu would come out and just be like, Red Dog, and then Usopp would immediately get killed. No, he Usopp might have, like, some trick up his sleeve. You know, like, if, how much prep time does Usopp get? That's the main question here. Usopp versus Akainu, if he has some prep time, like, all right, I have 12 hours, I'm going up against a Navy uh, Fleet Admiral, let me, let me maybe tinker around in the workshop a little bit. Maybe I can create something that can to, that can instantly freeze lava. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Now, seriously, there was uh, the One Piece opening "Wake Up," which is a bomb intro. I think it was like the 17th or 18th one. And uh, in that intro, there was a few hype moments where you see the Straw Hats, uh, particularly Luffy and Zoro and Sanji, go up against the three admirals. Uh, uh, not including uh, Green Bull at this time. Uh, and they also uh, take out, I believe, uh, Aokiji, obviously, because he's not a Navy Admiral at this point. But it's Luffy versus Akainu. I think we can kind of all see the reason why that happened. Uh, Zoro versus Fujitora, which kind of already happened. That was a really intense moment during Dressrosa when they clashed. And Zoro, even it, without knowing anything about Fujitora, without really knowing the, the man's position or even his name, just by clashing swords. And it wasn't even like clashing swords in a typical way. It wasn't like... Fujitora comes storming down the road, taking out his sword, and Zoro takes out his sword, and they BOOM! Right in the middle of Dressrosa, and the epic just armament hockey pouring off of it cracks the ground and the buildings around them, and, and Zoro's like, this man is truly tough! Nothing like that. It was more of like, Zoro going to attack him, and Fujitora just taking out his sword to just block it, 
And just by that interchange alone, Zoro, as soon as he hit his sword and he could tell like the level of resistance by it and probably the quality of the blade, Zoro could tell, and his reflexes as well, Zoro could tell, this man is strong. He is the real deal. And then we find out that's an admiral. So, yeah, we've already had a little bit of a clash between Fujitora and Zoro. But then the last fight that was in the opening wake up was, of course, Sanji versus Kizer. I I think that was the one that, like, a lot of people were a little bit, whoa, okay, okay now. Luffy versus Akainu, that's been built up a lot. All right, and we don't even know if it's going to be a straight-up one-on-one. Here's an idea. Luffy and Sabo team up and take on Akainu. That would be a cool fight. That would be neat. That's one way you could take it. There's a few ways you could take it. You could get Garp in there at some point, but we're going to hold off that for a little bit. We're talking about Sanji v. Kizaru. Do you think that's going to happen? If it was going to happen, we're going to have to get some serious training in on Sanji's side, all right? Like, now, it is true that out of the three monster trio aboard the ship, which I guess is eventually going to become the monster uh, quartet, because when Jinbei joins up, he's about in a similar league with these three guys right here, these three bad enough dudes. Um, out of the three, Sanji is the one that's the most, um, I guess specialized for observation because when Rayleigh was explaining the concept of hockey to Luffy he's like you know it is possible for people to learn both kinds of hockey but it's just like with anything in life there's going to be one type of hockey that you're just a little bit more prone to you're you learn it maybe a little faster you're just a little bit highly specialized in it it's like if you're a chef you know there's certain dishes you're going to be better at cooking than others and it's just how it goes right um so in the case with the monster trio Luffy's specialty is Conquerors, and he's the only one so far on the crew that does have Conquerors, uh, but he still knows pretty good armament and observation. It's not like his observation sucks. It's pretty good, especially after the fight with Katakuri. And in the case here with Zoro and Sanji, they both know armament and observation. It's just Zoro's specialty is armament and Sanji's is observation. And he's used this a few times in the series, particularly when he was inside Nami's body, mm -hmm, to go and try to find Kanemon's body inside of that freezing lake. You know, he was using his observation observation kind of like a radar or sonar like got to try to find the body boop, 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 boop. where is the body boop, 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 boop. i have big okay that kind of get distracted by that but oh there's a shark okay so yeah that that's the case there with sanji which really good observation hockey that's kind of like step one with going up against kizaru because kizaru has the power to move wicked fast speed of light light sword laser beams he can travel even if you want to say the whole argument like traveling at the speed of light it doesn't he doesn't need to travel at the speed of light he can still travel ridiculously faster than any other character we've seen so far so if you just want to say he can travel i don't know mach 3 mach 4 mach 5 that's still way faster than pretty much any other character for the most part so just roll with it right um so yeah he's got pretty devastatingly short mid and long range attacks so, step one, you gotta have really freaking redonkulously good observation. Uh, Rayleigh level, getting up there with, like, you know, Katakuri, where he could see into the future. Katakuri versus Kizaru, I think he could do a pretty good job at dodging a lot of Kizaru's attacks. Um, not saying Katakuri would win, I'm just saying, like, yeah, he busts out Yasakani Magatama. Katakuri could probably dodge the majority of those shots, right? So that's step one. Uh, but that's not even, that's, that, that, that just kind of maintains the ability to to see what Kizaru's doing, you still have to have the capacity to block his attacks. And right now, I gotta tell you guys, Kizaru breaks out his lightsaber, just like, and then goes to attack Sanji, and Sanji tries to block it with his leg. I don't think that's gonna end well. Even if Sanji armament hockeys up his leg, goes to block the laser beam, and just... I I'm thinking Sanji's gonna be out one leg after that. Like, even if he's like, armament hockey, Diablo Jambe, I think that sword's gonna slice right through it like butter. So before we even get to that point, either Sanji's gotta learn some really good, uh, like, top-level uh, armament, and... With the situation with Totland, we learned a whole new section of observation. The ability to see a little bit into the future using observation. Perhaps in Wano, because this is an arc that's focused along, you know, a lot of uh, samurai and, you know, armament hockey, obviously. You know, getting it into your sword and the black blades and all that. Probably going to be seeing a lot of that stuff in Wano. Perhaps in this arc, we'll learn the next level of armament. 
And if we can learn a secret with that, maybe Sanji and Zoro as well. Zoro, you know, his specialty is armament, but Sanji as well maybe picks up a few lessons here. If we're actually going to end this series with Sanji v. Kizaru, the way it is right now, it's not going to go too well. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be like a one-hit KO. I think with Sanji's level of observation, Kizaru shows up. Sanji might be able to see where he's at, but his body might, that might be the issue, his body might not be able to respond fast enough to block the attacks. You know, Kizaru zips in front of him, you know, fight, start, and Kizaru's first reaction is zipping way off to the left and then firing a laser beam. Sanji might be able to know, oh, he's gonna go to the left and fire! <laughs> He's like, maybe he'll be able to dodge it, like, barely and, like, get grazed on the shoulder or something. We're, of course, just going here that Kizaru is fighting seriously. He's not trying to bring him in. He's not trying to just knock him out. He's he's there for blood. That's the situation with all the admirals here. When they square off against the Straw Hats, they're going in for the kill. They're not just like, I'm going to bring you in. You know, it's just like Kizaru versus Sanji. Both are trying to take each other out full power. Uh, I don't think Sanji really has a hope right now. Um... Yeah, with that. Uh, or, hey, other option, maybe some type of armor. Because, like, Rayleigh had a damn sword, okay? Sword versus lightsaber, like, okay. Sanji's just got legs. I mean, and he does have some fabulous legs, but probably not as pale as mine. But, you know, like, blocking a laser with, a, with your leg, it's not looking too good there, alright? Now, he is able to bust up some pretty sizable things with his legs. He's able to lift giant banana crocodiles and, and bust up a pacifista, which is made of some pretty hardened steel, but lasers, they're on a completely different level here. So, for right now, I'm not seeing it. And of course, I think this is pretty obvious to a lot of people, but that's not even a guarantee that Kizaru's gonna fight Sanji. That was just thrown into the intro because it looks badass, which it did. I do think Zoro and Fujitora have to fight because they've kind of already set that up and he's the only swordsman. Well, I mean, Kizaru has a sword too, but, you know, actual physical swordsman in the Admirals, that's Fujitora. And of course, Luffy and Akainu have to have some altercation with what happened with his brother. I'm not saying it's a 1v1, but, you know, Luffy has to have a confrontation with a Kainu at some point. It's like to settle the grudge match, you know? But, you know, Sanji and Kizaru, I mean, there really wasn't a lot of setup for that. I mean, yeah, there was the scene at Sabaody, but that was Kizaru, like, taking out everybody, like, showcasing his badassness to the entire crew. It, it wasn't like Kizaru singled out uh, Sanji particularly, like, you, Black Leg Sanji, I don't care about any of the other Straw Hats, I'm taking you out first. Nothing like that. It just looked really cool in the opening, Wake Up, and that's why they did it. Uh, kind of the same thing within, I think it was Hard Knock Days, where Luffy clashed one-on-one -on -one with Kaido. You know, Luffy jumps up, gear forth, King Kong gun, and boom, Kaido and him just clash right there. Which, that actually did kind of happen in the manga, and we all know what came of that. But that doesn't mean, like, yeah, Kaido versus Luffy, one-on-one, -on -one, Luffy wins. That's how it's gonna go down. No, it's an intro. It's, it's trying to get you hyped for the episode. You know, that that's what it's all about there, right? Um... So, so yeah, and also, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, because of that reason, I'm gonna petition that the next intro we get, uh, after Superpowers right now is, uh, I wanna see that Usopp and Akainu fight in the intro. You know what? Let's be fair. Let's be fair. Like, 12 hours for Usopp to prepare against Akainu, that's probably not really fair. Let's give Usopp a solid week. You know, like, they go up to Usopp, like, Usopp... <laughs> We're, we're, we're going to fight against the Marines, uh, we're all out attack, and Usopp's like, oh my god, guys, why are we doing this? They're just like, because we gotta do it, Usopp, we gotta finish them. The, the ten straw hats going up against the Marines, you know, you can handle a Kainu, right? Like, why, why am I fighting against the Fleet Admiral? Well, because you're god, of course. I mean, Zoro's taking care of Fujitora, um, you know, Sanji's taking on Kizaru, Luffy's gonna take on that Green Bull guy, we don't even know what's up, um, but you you have to go on, I mean, you have to fight against the Fleet Admiral, Usopp. You have one week. You can plan this. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, oh, Usopp would definitely lose, like, 100%, but I feel like Akainu wouldn't take him seriously at first. You know, he would treat Usopp as nothing more than just an ant, and he wouldn't really go full power, and I think Usopp might, he might come up with something, like a freeze bomb or something, to just be like, ah, and then, pssst the hell did you just do? And then Usopp gets like one shot out on Akainu and he gets like a bloody nose and he's like, 
okay, you're dead. And then he just uses his awakened powers and just turns the entire area into a magma lava scape. And Usopp gets, you know, like, oh, just gets pulled in. And that's, that's the end of Usopp. But he went out like a baller, you know? Okay. So now moving on to Zoro and Fujitora. All right. You know, there's... Every time there's a badass swordsman introduced in the series, it's like, that's the tall tale sign, like, Zorob's gonna fight him. King had a sword on his side, you know, as a member of the Beast Pirates, he's gonna fight Zoro. We have uh, Fujitora, obviously, we have Shiryu of the Blackbeard Pirates, he has a sword, Zoro has a sword. So you know where that's gonna go. Except the thing is with Fujitora is he's a little bit of a different kind of admiral than the other ones. Um, you can you can tell that Fujitora is definitely somebody that, you know, unlike Shiryu, who just relies on backstabbing. I mean, Shiryu is a great swordsman, but he just doesn't care about his etiquette. You know, he does not care for the way of the sword or anything like that. He will do whatever he has to do to gain the upper hand in battle and win. That's 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 uh, Shiryu 100%. Um, Fujitora, the same thing with Mihawk, same thing thing with Zoro. They definitely respect their blades, and if they were going to have a battle, it would be more of like the traditional, like, we will duel now. You know, I could see it. You know, picturesque. You got a, a stormy uh, plain. You know, maybe a few trees in the distance, and then the grass is just rustling as the storm clouds begin overhead, and then you just have Zoro walk out, and then you have Fujitora walk out, and they draw their swords, and like, are you ready? Pirate Hunter Zoro. And just like, yeah, let's do this. Takes a swig of sake, throws the freaking uh, bottle back, sheaves his sword, puts on his headband, you know, and he does this, you know. Th th that would be like the kind of battle that they would have. Also, keep in mind, if we're really following this structure the same way we do in a story arc, where Luffy fights against the strongest opponent, Zoro fights the number two, Sanji fights the number three, if we're having it in that setup, then that would mean that all three admirals would have to, well, I guess four admirals if we include, you know, Akainu, who's the fleet admiral in that mix, they would have to all be in the same place at the same time while the Straw Hats get there. The only place I could see that happening, I mean, some people have thrown out the idea that that's going to happen in freaking Wano, but the only way I could see that happening legitimately so far is, you know, at Raftal, the final battle, where it's like, the One Piece has been discovered, this is happening now, Raftal's location is right here, that's the moment where not only the Marines and the Straw Hats, but like, the other Yonko crews, if they're still around at that point, they all just, everybody, just the, the Warlords, they just flock to Raftal, and this like, epic battle just rages meanwhile somewhere else in the world doflamingo wherever he happens to be if he's still an impel down or if he's somewhere else he doesn't even need to know it's happening he can just sense it and he just pops like a rocking heart on he's just like oh i knew it was gonna happen throne was let me know who wins actually i don't know i don't need to know i'll just i'll be able to tell psychically Oh, I knew that was going to happen. You guys are at, you know, that, that entire battle might destroy, you know, the entire world and completely upset the, the, the standings of things. Aren't you happy you took me down now, you know? But, or, or Dofi could be part of it. That would be beautiful. Eneru comes down from this, like, everybody just gets drawn to it. They can sense the epicness, and they just go to it. Like, this is where I need to be, right here, right now. So, it, hey, the, the admirals might arrive at another island, but for right now, this is where I can see this. Where they get to Raftal, and it's like a boss gauntlet. And they run into the marines, and... I, I could see, like, you know, the admirals just are arriving, maybe, like, on, on top of a mountain or something, and they're just, like, you know, all the other marines, all the other, like, the captains, the commodores, even the vice admirals, don't even bother with them. We're gonna be the ones to take down the Straw Hat crew. This is gonna happen, like, the, what we need, like, the one-on-one -on -one fights, you know, like, Akainu comes down, squares off against Luffy, Fujitora comes down, squares off against Zoro, and, uh, Kizuru and Sanji, Ryo Kyogu, maybe Jinbei, I guess, you know, um, and that's the way it's gotta be. Meanwhile, the other Marines, like, the Vice Admirals and the Commodores and the Captains and everything, they go up against, uh, you know, like, Robin and, uh, Usopp, Chopper, all those dudes, Brooke, obviously, and there's some squaring off there. There. But, like, it's like the Marines and the Admirals know, like, all the crap the Straw Hats have done, all of the big events in the series, you know, the bounties they've accrued, they realize that they need to, it needs to end right here, right now, 
We're not even going to bother trying to send our lower tiered members at you because we know it's it's not going to happen. The only way this could go down is if we admirals get our hands dirty and we just dive right into the fray and we take you down. That's the best shot we got. And hey, if we lose, well, I guess uh, that's just on us for not ending out the problem back during Marine Ford. You know, like that scene where Luffy, like this scene right here, where Luffy crashes down in front of all of the freaking admirals. He's got his log. You know, remember Luffy's log? That was that was like the one one of the few times Luffy uses a straight up weapon in the series. It was a mast of a ship. He comes down and he tries to hold off the admirals. I mean, like, yeah, you have to figure there were other people helping Luffy out there, but you also have to see the admirals were kind of lackadaisical with it. A little bit blase when they see Luffy just pound into the ground right in front of them and, you know, throw the freaking mast and stuff. You know, they're all just kind of standing there and Aokiji freezes the mast and then Luffy breaks it and Kizaru's just kind of like, whoa, you need to slow down there, Straw. You really get the idea that they weren't taking him as a serious threat, but if this is the situation I'm envisioning where it's at Raftal and this final battle's going on and the Straw Hats do manage to uh, persevere and they defeat the Admirals, I, I could see Aokiji, and well, Aokiji might be there as well, I would assume he would be, but also like Kizaru and Akainu, maybe thinking back to this scene right here, when Luffy arrived in front of them, and they all have the same thought at the same time, like, you know, if we were going to take him out, that would have been the time to do it. If we would have considered him maybe a little bit more of a threat, if, if the second that Luffy landed right in front of us with that mask, we would have just went 100% on his ass and just dive-bombed him and just did everything in our power to just end him. Like, Akainu just immediately turned the ground into lava, and then Kizaru just jumps into the sky and just, you know, just unloads a barrage of laser bullets, like, in the entire, like, like 100-yard radius around where Luffy landed, and Aokiji tries to freeze his body. Just, like, if they busted out every everything against, like, they were fighting against him, like, like, Alucard was about to awaken, like, level zero, and they just unloaded a barrage, that would have been their one chance to do it, but they didn't, they didn't take him as a serious threat, and now here he is with his crew, garnering so much power, he's the fifth emperor, he has, like, at this point in the series, of a, a four billion berry bounty, I don't freaking know, and, um, they managed to defeat the navy high admirals, and you're, they're just laying there, and, a moment where all like I could see that as a major morale loss for the entire Marines. Like, can you imagine that? Like the other vice admirals, you know, fighting against the Straw Hats and maybe the Grand Fleets there, and they're all brawling, and all of a sudden, just boom, Kizaru just falls out of the sky, like <gasps> blood everywhere, just like <gasps> oh no, you know, and then boom, Akainu falls, boom, freaking uh, Fuji Tora and Ryukyogu fall, and, and at that point, the Marines are just like. Oh shit. Okay. Uh whew. Yeah, you could just go. Screw it. Just just go. Just go get the one piece. Jesus. Wow. Why you didn't have to be that mean about it. Oh man. Um Yeah, so uh let let's talk about um I got a little distracted there on my fan fiction, but let let's go back a little bit more to Fujitora and Zoro. Um you know, a little bit different than Sanji and Kizuru. Right now, I think Zoro and Fujitora they could have a fight that could last a, a, a fair amount of time. It wouldn't be over very quick, but this is mostly because Fujitora, you know, he doesn't move ungodly as fast as Kizaru. You got a lot of it. You got to have a lot of interesting problems with Kizaru. His Devil Fruit presents a lot of new problems. With Fujitora, you just really have to worry about he has extremely high levels of observation and armament, uh, and you know, just the fact he's blind doesn't mean anything because he can sense everybody's aura. That might actually give him a better sense because he can really tell when an attack is coming not just based on the aura but all of his other senses like his hearing and all that stuff um but beyond that all you really got to worry about is the gravity fruit and i mean hey all the guy can do is manipulate gravity that's not that much of an op ability zoro will be fine but uh you know i i don't know if um i don't know how that fight would go if he would bust out the gravity fruit like right away or if Fujitora would be like, you know, I am a swordsman. I am fighting against another swordsman. Maybe I should just do this the right way. Maybe I shouldn't get my devil fruit involved. Maybe I should just, you know, clash with him a traditional way. Um, but then, and I could even see maybe Fujitora having a change of heart. Let's say they fight... And the fight is kind of going even just based on swords and armament hockey and observation and all that. But let's get, to, it gets to a point where Zoro's like getting the upper hand and Zoro is beginning to win. And then maybe, maybe Fujitora realizes, you know, he's up to this point, he's been a rather chivalrous kind of guy, but he realizes, you know, 
maybe I need to put that part of me aside for this because I cannot let the Pirates win. Maybe he starts to realize, like, you know, I was drafted into the Marines. I'm relatively new to this, and I've been looking around, and I've been pointing out all the problems with the Marines. Like, there's the warlord system, and then there's the way that, you know, the Marines wanted to handle Dressrosa with Doflamingo and all that stuff. You know, like, this is wrong. This is horrible. Maybe Fujitora might start to realize, like, oh, this is... This is the reason why Akainu acted this way. This is the reason why the Marines were so, you know, mad at me when I tried to go up against them at, you know, at, at Dress Rosa and why they covered up the whole crocodile thing. Like, you know, it, it's all for the, in, in the sense of the Marines, maybe like a twisted justice, like the greater good, you know, like, you know, by any means necessary, we need to eliminate the pirate scourge. Maybe Fujitora might have a change of heart like that where he's like, by any means necessary. And then that's when he busts out the gravity fruit and the entire island gets shook and then like Zoro's floating up and it's like, what? And like the, the sword flies out of his hand. He's like, what the hell? And then he brings down the meteor. Like at the same time, Zoro is being lifted into the air. Freaking Fujitora brings down a meteor like it's gonna flash like a sandwich right in the middle of the sky. And, and, you know, it's like, oh, this isn't exactly like a real swordsman. And it's like, yes, but by any means necessary, I will finish you. Could be something along those lines. Okay, but overall, I think it's a little bit more of a fair fight than Sanji and Kizaru right now. Um, okay, so now moving on to Luffy's fight. All right, now, like I said, there's a lot of ways you could look at this. Akainu killed Ace, Luffy's sworn brother. But he's also Sabo's sworn brother. But he's also Garp's, you know, cherished grandson. So any take take your pick. Any of those fights, you know, mixed together or separate, I would be okay with. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one fight, Luffy and Akainu, I'd be cool with that. Luffy, I mean, Sabo and Akainu, fine. Garp and Akainu, fine. Because they all have the freaking motivation behind it to deliver a knuckle sandwich or a gum gum pistol or a or a fire fist right upside a Kainu's face. They all have a reason for it. Um, I was throwing out the idea that Garp might get on it, get in on it first, and something might happen with a Kainu, and he just sees him, and he just can't handle it. He can't contain his rage anymore, and he just goes after him, and a Kainu might win that fight, and then that gives like Luffy and Sabo even more of a drive. L Sabo and Garp didn't really have as much of a because he didn't grow up with him, you know. Uh, but even so, when Garp arrived at Dadan's place, he treated Sabo kind of like his his step grandson, you know. The same thing with Ace. Ace is not Garp's biological grandson but he still raised him up the same way i can imagine garp seeing sabo and be like well you you're a friend of aces and luffy's eh? well i'm gonna give you the same treatment you know and so sabo would still care very much about garp i think you know just growing up the memories and all that stuff um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna keep up with my idea though the sabo luffy thing uh, because that would give us a cool dual battle, you know, a two-on-one thing. Um, you know, not not just Luffy and Sabo, but you gotta kind of throw the spirit of Ace in there, too. And I'm not talking about, like, a Jedi ghost. I'm not talking about, like, you know, like, Luffy and Sabo are squaring off against a Kainu, and they're having a rough time, and they're about to get killed, and then all of a sudden... Just like like in uh, Naruto, like Rin, she shows up out of nowhere and grabs Obito and Kakashi and pulls them closer together. It's the same same scene, like Luffy and Sabo are about to get dual fisted, and then Ace shows up at the last minute, like pulls them away. Not nothing like that. Nothing so dramatic like that. But I would like to maybe see a, a scene where a Kainu he's staring down Luffy and Sabo. And they're getting ready to fight. Like, Luffy activates gear 4th or gear 5th or whatever he'll have at that point. And Sabo, you know, flames on. Maybe Sabo can reach the awakened level of the Mara Mara, 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 Mara no Mi. Maybe he'll have a whole, like, it's blue fire or white fire. Like, white hot fire. And you know what? That would be a cool, because I always bring this up with Akainu. Like, you know, magma is can actually be colder than fire. It depends on the fire. Like, you get white hot fire. It can be way hotter than magma. You know, I bring that up as like, uh, oh, Oda maybe didn't include that, but he might. He might include that. Because you'd figure like, you know, it's like, oh, you have the same fruit as Fire Fist. Well, you know that I was able to defeat him, right? You know magma burns hotter than fire. Or it's like fire in its solid form. It's better. And then that's when Sabo is like, yeah, but I've been training. And he, whoosh! And then like blue fire and then white fire. And he's like, this burns even hotter than magma, mother You know? And, and, and Akainu's staring down Luffy and Sabo about to attack him and he's like these two wait a second no 
these three. And then, like, just in a Kainu's perspective, he sees, like, an image, like, a ghostly image of... He's not really there as a ghost, but an image of, of Ace standing next to Sabo. So we can just have this awesome image, like, a double-page spread of Luffy, Sabo, and Ace, like, staring down a Kainu, like, the three brothers, we're gonna be the ones to take you down. I think that would be the most poetic way to do it. Um, you know, Garp, you can include him maybe in another fight I would love to see. I would love to him make good on that promise after a Kainu floored Ace, and then Sengoku had to hold him down. He's like, you keep holding me down, Sengoku, because I'm gonna beat the crap out of that Sakazuki if you let up even a little bit. I would love to see the, you know, the, the him make good on that promise. What, what was the end of that movie? What that alternate ending would have looked like, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, other than that, Three Brothers versus Akainu, that would be the best. Um, and more importantly, like, if Zoro defeats Fujitora, if Sanji were to defeat Kizaru, those would be hefty losses for the Marines. I mean, obviously, they're the, the greatest fighting force you have. But Akainu being the fleet admiral, that's like... Th that's like the symbol of the power of the Marines in one man. It's gonna be the fleet admiral, right? If they manage to take him down, and I'm picturing the scene of like Akainu lying on the ground, all cracked around him like missing teeth his eyes are whited out and everybody witnessing that like it would be like if Sengoku got taken down by Whitebeard at Marineford like not just for morale but like for the entire like the entire world would have a heart attack at that like that that's 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 the leader of the Marines that's the symbol that's who he is and he's gone he's been defeated by the Straw Hats holy crap that's not good that would be a whole other level now I was going to end the video right here, because when I originally came up with this idea, like a year and a half ago, it was going to be Luffy and Zoro and Sanji. Fine. But since then, we got a little bit more information on Ryukyogu. At least we've seen kind of a little bit more of his silhouette. Haven't seen his face yet, but at least we know he has the, the locks and he, uh, his laughter style. I think it's like ra-ha-ha-ha -ha -ha or something like that. So that's enough information to go off of here. Um, and also, Jinbei has now officially, unofficially officially join the crew so bonus level guys jimbei versus green bull let's go with this all right so we all know that jimbei has the power of fishman karate huh? and ryo kyogu's got the power of extreme fasting I can't talk about it, because we have we have no idea what he could fight. It's a joke. It was a joke. I'm sorry, because I, I would love to. I would really love to. And if we find just a little bit more about Ryukyogu's ability, if we find out a little bit about anything, like, he has conquerors. Okay, fine. I can work with that. He has a nature devil fruit. We don't know much about it. Okay, you know what? Fine. I can work with that. But right now, he, uh, Jinbei could probably do a good job, you know? He's, he's kind and, and Jinbei wouldn't know anything about him either. You can't even say Jinbei, oh, well, he's a member, he was a previous member of the Warlord, so he might have some intel on how Green Bull fights, but he wouldn't because he defected and then the world government draft occurred and then boom, that's how that happened. Ryokyogu and Fujitora got added. I can talk about that world government draft though. How do you think that worked? Because I find it, I find it amazing that there was, like, ridiculously strong, like, older men like Fujitora and Green Bull just hanging out in the world, not allied with the Marines, not allied with the pirates or the revolutionaries. They're just chilling out. How did the news of the draft even meet them? Uh, did they personally go to the draft board in a list? I, I, that could have been a possibility, I guess. But the way he was talking about it seemed a little bit different. It seemed like he was just recruited. So, uh, I don't know how that whole process went. If they, like... You you know, they sent a, a, car a, a carrier bats to various islands and kingdoms, and they're like, the government's doing a draft. Um, each kingdom needs to present, I don't know, their, their 10 strongest warriors in the entire kingdom. And uh, if you're allied with the world government, you need to give up your strongest warriors to the Marines because we need them now more than anything. Might have been something like that. Might have been something more like, hey, we know that this might leave your kingdom like defenseless, so to speak, but you have to understand... Um, 
you know, it, it, you know, this is the this is for the greater good of the world government. So even though your kingdom might be a little bit weaker, you need to send us your Achilles. You know, Achilles, the famous Greek hero, is like the strongest dude that ever existed in Greek. So it's like, you know, you have to if you have someone like him, if you have an Achilles, you need to send him to us. You know, he he might still your kingdom might get taken over if that happens, kind of like in the Trojan and Greek War. But you know, we need him right now more than you need him. So that's the point. So it might have been something like that. Might have been like a kingdom that Fujitora might have uh, lived at. He might have been a hermit or something living out in the mountains, but it's like the lore, you know, the king gets the, uh, the, 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 the draft declaration and he's like, oh, we need to gather our strongest warriors. Hey, we hear that there's this really aloof hermit like samurai, this blind samurai living out in the woods and uh, we don't know much about him, but we hear he's really strong. He's like, bring him to me at once. And then Fujitora gets brought before him. He's like, we're, we're drafting you to the world government. And he's like, Okay. And then he went. Might have been something like that. I don't know. He might have personally enlisted. I don't know. But uh, let me know what you think about that. All right. So with that being said, that's the video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and, you know, have a discussion on how I was wrong. Like maybe I'm... Matt, you're under-leveling Sanji or you're over-leveling Usopp. Or maybe you agree with me with Usopp. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get going. I have to actually hit up the store after this. I got to get some toilet paper, some milk, some water, three uh, first aid kits, 60 lengths of wire, and a rubber duck. Because uh, we're about to get a huge winter storm up here in Pennsylvania. And of course, with every winter storm, they got to bill it like, this is the end of the world. You know, you got to go to the go to the store and stock up. You need bread. So much bread. All right, well, I got to go do that now. I got to prepare. I got to hunker down. Have a good one, everybody. Teching signing out.